Greetings, and bienvenue, Midna crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Hello, Anonymous. My name is Anonymous. For the last four years, I worked at a top-secret facility under a shadow branch of the military that the presidents didn't even know about. I drove a forklift. The place I worked at is known as Area 51. Every day, four to six days a week for eight to twelve hours, depending on the political climate. For nearly four years, I worked in one of the four warehouses for the company. I'm here to let you know, once and for all, that there are no recovered alien spacecraft or alien bodies, at least that I know of. Area 51 is a military base and airfield from which a fleet of unknown, unmarked, unofficial stealth bombers can at a moment's notice drop a quarter of a million pounds of chemical weapons, including nerve gas or biological weapons, on the United States populace. Why? When I was hired, I was briefed on the mission of the facility. The mission was to prevent the spread of an infectious form of insanity known as the deluge. I'm telling you this because I've recently discovered that the deluge is bullshit. There is no deluge. The government has had this weird self-destruct program in place since the 1700s. I say, government. But really, Groom Lake is, from what I have seen, a completely separate entity from the government, because no one in the government knows it's there. It is funded by the Federal Reserve. We are paid in cash and given special forms that say we are exempt from the IRS. The IRS and the Federal Reserve are in fact both private corporations that, like Area 51, has as much to do with the federal government as Federal Express. Our facilities manager, the guy who is in charge of repairs and construction, recently wanted to reroute some conduit, and in the process of demolishing some walls, a secret vault was discovered. This vault contained a library-like file archive that dated back to as far as 1710. There has been a secret organization that seems to have originally been privately funded and run by a branch of some militia that was originally from New York. Over the centuries, because they were so secretive, and because there was so much counter-espionage, and everything was based on handshakes and nods with little or no paper trail. This militia, having originally been formed to overthrow a potential future tyrannical government had morphed and mutated, through centuries of backstabbing, misdirection, and paranoia, into an organization that seems to have no real direction, and yet possesses nearly infinite resources. Before I started working at Groom Lake, there had been programs to build stealth bombers that could drop chemical and biological weapons that were more advanced than anything the actual government had. I've seen them with my own eyes. They are real, and there are a few hundred of them, fueled and ready to go at the drop of a hat. I could understand the need for a secret stockpile of bio and chemical weapons. I could even understand the need to use them on the American people in some bizarre and unlikely disaster. But what I couldn't understand and why I'm posting this is why the alarm to initiate an all-or-nothing attack wasn't attached to anything. There is no computer, no phone line, no wireless modem, nothing. Every day we pass by the lights and sirens, praying that they would never go off. And now I've finally realized that they aren't wired to anything. I want the madness to stop. The exorbitant waste of hundreds of billions of dollars. The waste of talent. The waste of brilliant engineers and scientists. The constant threat of execution for treason. The circular hierarchy of men in sunglasses and black suits who do nothing but invent work out of thin air. Who answer to no one and don't know what they are doing. At some point, those chuckleheads were going to do something that leads to a real cataclysm. They are always working on some new piece of tech some new computer virus, some new genetically engineered germ, some new kind of delivery system. There is a lot of talk about a contract with soda bottling plants, so much stupidity and insanity. It's been going on forever and there is zero accountability. I can't report them to anyone, not that anyone would believe me. I don't even know if they could legally put me in prison for what I'm telling you. At first, the pension plan sounded great. The healthcare coverage was total and absolute. The perks were also a lot of fun. We carry all kinds of nifty gadgets, some pretty mind-blowing apps on my iPhone. And then there's the pay. I was making six figures tax-free to drive a fucking forklift. It's not worth it anymore. I told my supervisor that those files we found would lead to some kind of mutiny. He told me there have been mutinies before. It's weird how this super-secretive, ultra-classified organization that isn't even part of our actual government or military 
has almost no secrets on the inside. There is nothing that is on a need-to-know basis. Everyone knows everything and everyone sees everything, which is the second most disturbing part about working for Area 51. Sure, some doors are locked, but sometimes they are just left wide open. Guys talking shop in the cafeteria like it's nothing. Hey Bob, we're getting really close to solving that overheating problem on the satellite death ray. How is the build on that virus that cancels everyone's credit cards going? My supervisor tells me that area one of the district managers bought the controlling shares of the company back in 1985, and then some random trespasser from one of the decoy entrances just walked onto the premises and shot him in the heart with a revolver. After they got rid of both bodies in a fucking bonfire in the middle of the lake, the power vacuum led to a change in management. But of course, the direction or mission of the company has always been the same. Just look busy. Ladies and gentlemen, you would not believe the utter incompetence of our managers. Most of the time, they have this serious, stoic look on their face, like they have the weight of the whole world on their shoulders, typing away on a computer. But they are just going through the motions, just like everyone else in that place. One of my managers, I'm not really sure what his job exactly is, just sits in his office most of the time typing up orders for me and the other drivers, but I also see him in the hangars micromanaging the guys doing the daily inspections on the bombers. Supposedly, he is the one who my supervisor answers to, but I've seen my supervisor giving him orders on many occasions and the fucking guy gives a, yes sir, right away sir, like it's his first day. I'll call him Jeff. One day, Jeff gives me a clipboard of orders. I need to rotate some raw materials and boxes and bring some routine supplies onto the trucks that move the supplies to other parts of the facility. Then, in the middle of my shift, he's standing there in the warehouse, just looking like he has nothing to do, and fucking asks me what I'm doing and if I need any help. I nearly lost it. I like it. A giant, self-sustaining organization that forgot its purpose long ago, and yet any employee there could probably end the world at the drop of a hat. I'm reminded of the story about the room full of monkeys in a room with a bunch of bananas on a ladder. If I had to describe Area 51 in one word, it would be inefficient. It's like the whole purpose of the company is to produce inefficiency. They will spend a quarter of a million dollars to do all kinds of background checks and investigations into a truck driver to make sure he's not a communist spy. I am not exaggerating. Only for him to fail a drug test after falling asleep at the wheel when they could have gotten some kid in the army to do the same job for half the pay and would have rather died than fail his mission. The way I was hired was also really unnerving. I made a profile on a job finding website. I was already with a temp agency, but they came to my door anyway. The hiring officer shows up one afternoon and offers me a high paying government job. Of course, I immediately quit the temp agency and took the opportunity. After I found out that there were no aliens that they knew of, they told me they spend $20,000 following me, studying my internet browsing habits, tapping me phones, going through my garbage, watching the shows I watched, and doing all the same to my mom, dad, and the rest of my immediate family. They even did background checks on every teacher I've ever had since kindergarten, just to make sure I wasn't some kind of potential double agent. Of course, they have an entire wing dedicated to researching potential employees with several dozen guys in offices and in the field, just to hire someone to drive a forklift, when they could just isolate the different departments from one another so that no one knows what they are working on except the higher-ups. But it became obvious after a few months why that couldn't work, because the higher-ups don't exist, and the managers are literally making it up as they go along. I'm telling you all this in hopes that there will be some kind of revolution. Of course, everyone I've ever tried to tell either blew it off as a joke, or me being crazy, or just ignored it out of fear that they would disappear. I didn't tell my best friend who I've known since I was eight that I was working at Area 51, but I did tell a total stranger at a diner once. I told him because he told me he had blown the whistle on a company that was illegally dumping toxic waste in China. The story he told me was harrowing. He told me that they went after his family. He told me he had to wear gloves everywhere he went for a while because when he changed his identity, they had started tracking him by his fingerprints. He told me that he couldn't tell me his new name because they might be listening through someone else's cell phone in the diner. When I told the guy my story, he first thought I was mentally ill, and that because he had told such an interesting story that I had somehow tricked myself into thinking I was part of it. He told me he used to work in a mental hospital and saw it happen before. A few weeks after that, I got in trouble with the managers, 
They held me in a room for hours with one of those one-way mirrors. It was like a movie. I thought they were going to interrogate me or just put a bullet in my brain. After a while, Jeff came in and said that I was going to be given a written warning. Another week later, my supervisor and I were talking about it, and apparently the guy I told was followed for a while and then he committed himself to a mental hospital. I'll either have one of their outsourced goons somehow blow my house up and make it look like a gas leak or cut my brake line, or they'll send me to the unemployment line with a resume that says I worked at Area 51 for four years. Most likely, the manager won't know what to do with a guy who seems to have a death wish, yet knows more about the warehouse inventory better than anyone else. They might just give me a demotion or cut my pay. They aren't worried about anyone spilling the beans. A guy who works in the maintenance department spilled the beans a few years ago, before I started working there. He blabbed to every newspaper in Nevada and he's still there, because no one believed him. This whole monologue is extremely believable, at least in my eyes it is. What were you supposed to say if someone asked you what you did for a living? That he works maintenance at a warehouse. His name is Craig. I'll tell you his name because he seriously doesn't give a shit, nor do I anymore. Craig told me that the only one who would publish his story was a magazine, and they would only publish it in the weird and paranormal section, but only if they were allowed to change some of the details to make the story sound more exciting and less like the plot to that movie office space. He said that after he was finished cussing them out and realized the dial tone was ringing, he realized that the entire rigmarole about under penalty of treason, minimum 10 years in prison and a $1 million fine, classified under Article 19, Line 4, Subsection B, and all their scary paperwork, it was entirely unnecessary. I don't know who else to tell my story. I've told you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I've told many people, I may be editorializing a tad bit here and there, but it is exactly as I have stated. You're the only ones who might have the wherewithal to show up on their doorstep with signs and masks. Hopefully you'll bring some guns and Molotov cocktails. Be careful. There are plenty of spooks who hang out on 4chan. What you're suggesting, even as part of a story, could be taken the wrong way by certain people. Dude, are you trying to get us killed? The best we could hope for is if we amassed a decent-sized militia with standard tech and weapons, and even then we would be utterly massacred. Plus, no one gives enough of a fuck to actually initiate such a ludicrous coup, myself included. Get you killed? There is virtually no real danger to walking into Area 51 besides the rattlesnakes. The company hires a bunch of mall cops and dresses them in full soldier costumes. They probably couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. I don't believe you, OP provide some kind of evidence, or else your story is no better than that of all the role players. What kind of evidence? Every day we board a plane at a regular commercial airport, but before that we go through a metal detector, a full body scan, and a pat down for cameras and contraband. The plane lands in a nearby airfield, and then we take shuttle buses to the Groom Lake facilities where there is another layer of full body scans which are even more sophisticated to make sure we can't leave with anything. Not that much of the stuff from there would even be too out of the ordinary. We use commercial computers and commercial equipment. They don't buy any very exotic raw materials. Nothing at the company is very much out of the ordinary except for maybe the bugs, and it's too much of a risk to the public for me to sneak a sample of them out even if I could. They don't give us any special IDs or passes. The guards just know our faces. The body scans do the rest. Even before the body scans, I've been told by the more senior employees that their driver's license was sufficient identification. OP's story just gained some legitimacy. The tinfoil hat crowd have been discussing for years the windowless planes that go to and from Area 51. They of course thought they were windowless to hide the aliens or some such nonsense. This is so absurd it wouldn't surprise me if it is true. No special badges? Incorrect. Having made deliveries of flight manuals to the terminal. Yes. They outsource things like that. I've been there during crew change. Their badges are like paperback books hanging around their neck. Goddamned huge and there are tons of them. Windowless? Also incorrect. It's a fairly standard 737, which, no surprise, includes windows. Hell, you can stand across the street and watch the workers get off the plane in full public view. Those badges are for outsourced contractors. The regulars like me don't carry badges and they are more so they can recognize one another, not to get on the plane. 
There are facial recognition cameras watching the gate and inside the plane and at the Area 51 facilities. Any badges would be superfluous. And I never said the planes were windowless. Maybe back in the 90s they were windowless, and before that they just flew in military planes. But we do indeed fly in regular commercial jets. Paranormal supernatural is another thing. Also, what is so supernatural about a forklift operator from Area 51? What do you think nobody works there? Op, you should sneak in a smartphone and have the track location enabled. Have the software that connects its screen to your Mac. Live stream it. We all shit bricks as you go to Area 51. It sounds like you just went through a scanner and you didn't mention any electronics allowed. And you mentioned there is no communication besides verbal and some writing. If they question your phone, say that Craig told you to bring one in for testing to see if it has software tracking capabilities for future projects. I use an iPhone for work sometimes, actually, but it's just to call work or let them know if I'm running late. There are special programs and apps installed on it that allow me to call from anywhere in the world without it being able to be triangulated except by the security department at Groom Lake, but it has never really been necessary. Cell phone signals are scrambled at Groom Lake, so no chance of live stream, but our smartphones have to be left at the airport anyway. The entire facility is designed to prevent external surveillance. The body scans at the airport that are used for the employees of Groom Lake are way more invasive than the ones for regular travelers. They see into our internal organs and can detect metal objects smaller than the smallest camera. I couldn't even hide a camera inside my asshole. They even specifically detect components that resemble the components of a camera, so you can't even have a keychain spy cam without them knowing about it. This is very interesting. Hey OP, so who are the guys that come out with the truck and watch you if you get too close to Area 51? Like I said earlier, they are just regular security guards. They aren't super elite soldiers. They aren't Jason Bourne clones. They don't have any more special training than the security guard that you see at your local mall. They have better equipment and wear plate body armor and carry fully automatic riffles. And they have cooler surveillance toys to play with. But they are just random guys. I've talked to a bunch of them and they are all assholes who think they are super elite soldiers because they were chosen. But in reality, the newer ones were just selected at random by a computer. Quite a few have law enforcement and military experience, but again, so do a lot of security guards you see standing around in department stores. Interesting. That makes them seem a lot less menacing. So would they just shoot you without warning if you got too close or what? I know the guards aren't really told to shoot on sight, even though there are warnings that say they will. Back in the day, the guards definitely would have shot someone for stepping over the line. But now, because of all the tourists, they will just yell at you and jab the barrel of their guns in your face. They will hood you, detain you in a special little jail they have near one of the decoy entrances, question you, scare you, and tell you they know where you live and all that jazz. But it's unlikely they will kill you. I've heard of tourists in the 90s at various times stepping past the beyond this point signs and the guards having to swoop in and act like gangsters. But the only time they've ever shot someone is when one guy walked right up to the shuttle bus lot. But that guy was legitimately crazy. Anon, tell me what this pyramid thing is all about. It's right next to Area 51. Can't post pic because it's already on slash X slash somewhere. Those pyramids are just big piles of dirt under which they store barrels of toxic waste. The waste is a result of the manufacturing process of the stealth skin on the planes. Aside from stockpiling bio, chemical weapons, and stealth bombers, Groomlike is also one of the largest dumping grounds for toxic waste. Strangely enough, there isn't a higher incidence of cancer than normal among workers. Up until the 90s, they used to burn the stuff. But the EPA raised a stink about it, so the management changed the policy. It's still stupid, though, because there are ways to treat toxic waste so that it isn't toxic anymore. Even though it's expensive, they have infinite money. But again, nothing about what they do at Area 51 makes sense. What's with all the aliens surrounding this area? Do you laugh at documentaries and films about Area 51? Why is no one allowed past certain points if there is nothing to hide aside from weapons and aircrafts? I don't laugh at those documentaries. I haven't really paid any attention to them. I know the popular theory is that there are flying saucers at Area 51, but I know that's just based on the Roswell incident. Most of the stories about the Roswell incident are pure bullshit. I think anyone who does any serious research into it will find that the incident was a total hoax. A guy found a radar reflective balloon target and knew it was just a balloon target. 
but wanted some attention, so he claimed it was wreckage from a crashed flying saucer. Of course, journalists back in those days had absolutely no integrity and exaggerated even more of the details. Now it's just a tourism gimmick, though it is pretty funny seeing satellite photos of Groom Lake on the internet. Tell us more, OP. Besides jets, what else is there tech-wise? I've told you all the most interesting stuff there is. There are planes in Hangar 30 that haven't been maintained since the late 60s because they are obsolete, but the management has no place to put them. They were supposed to carry nukes that would have been dropped on American soil, but the company never made any atomic weapons. There are projects in the works to put satellites in space that could punch holes in the Van Allen belt and allow unfiltered solar radiation through to fry the communications infrastructure and kill thousands of people. Otherwise, it's just like any industrial tech manufacturing and research plant. The number of people who work there is in the thousands, I think. And there are thousands more workers that the company outsources who work from home. There are a few supercomputers that run an automated fabrication assembly line of robot arms. Then there's the germ bomb lab, which is the only place that requires any special clearance, which is basically just a key fob for people who have been trained on safety and hazards. So they don't maintain them, but they inspect them. Also, you said that they'd be fueled and ready to go at a moment's notice to kill millions of Americans. How is that possible if they're not maintained? No, there is a separate hangar with a few dozen planes from the 60s that are obsolete. It's sort of like an aviation museum. They don't maintain or inspect those planes. They just keep those bombers there because they have no place to put them so they just built new hangars. Now and then they store other items in that hangar so the planes might be moved around and some rust will flake off. There are hundreds of other planes in different hangars underground that are ready to stem the deluge which will never happen. Hundreds of billions of dollars to prevent something that won't ever happen. And even if it did happen, there is no real functioning alert system to get the pilots into the planes. I guess that now that they know the alarms are basically just for show, they will just say they need to be fixed or something ridiculous like they usually say. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.